Just double check it. Hello, I'm Supersys CVI. Welcome to the very first animation tutorial. Um, this is just for the basics of animating. And hopefully, after the short little session of me sitting here and discussing several different ways and different pro I'm sorry, several ways to animate with digital art, we will then discuss some things and perhaps have a better idea as to what to do with the next episode. It's also called Green Star Studio. I don't know. That was nice. Anywho, let's begin by, you know, what this current one is about. And you can see it right there. It's a list of three things. Because the very first and the most important thing about making an artwork is it exists. Also, the most important thing about homework is turning it in. Um, but, you can also check to make sure, okay, my mouse is visible. It would be weird if you couldn't see my mouse. Um, I'm going to change that for now. Anywho, so, first things first, we're going to need to know, you know, exactly how to make an animation. That's correct. Okay. Okay, we're going to, we're going to make a little animation. We're going to have to make whatever it is and export it and have it real to use because if we don't know how to make an animation, what's the point of making tutorials for animation? I'm sure most of you know how to, but in case somebody doesn't, I want to be able to make sure that they can get up to speed and be able to follow along with the other tutorials that I'll be doing. So first things first, we have to know, download the program, sorry, well yeah, download the programs first. Having a program to animate with is important. So, sorry, it's a little off it, but let's just, let's just dive right in. So first things first, what program? And thankfully I have a cheat sheet right over here that says exactly what it can and can't, well, sorry, what rec programs I would recommend. Clearly, I'm using Fire Alpaca right now, I just updated it, so there's a bunch of new functions I have no idea how to do anything with. Also, it turns out that my computer was sending out the audio. Anywho, so Fire Alpaca is one that allows you to create different types of animation and then export it. And I've just been using it for some very simple um, artwork, but it's also free for artwork, comic work. But let's see what else is on here. Game Maker Studio is also on here. I'm just going to open up um, some other ones. So let's see if I can also make this. Um, can I increase the size of the... Zoom in? Okay, cool. So you can see that there are... Oh, Game Maker's always been free for... Without Professional. I don't know why I said that. I'm being silly. I've used Game Maker for 10 years, I should know better. So, first things first. Um, Fire Alpaca. It's a very basic but powerful at the same time tool engine that allows you to draw shapes allows you to onion layer allows you to do and allows you to export to frames which is important later on when it comes to animating so secondly did I open Game Maker yet? Uh, I know GIMP opened I don't know if Game Maker did yeah so GIMP I used this back in high school it's still very powerful this version is currently an older version. I check the help. Oh, uh, is it like an about? There's an about. 2.2.8.8. I'm sure they're probably three or something by now. And I didn't get a lot of time to figure out exactly what GIMP's a I could do with GIMP. Push come to shove. You can make animations with it just fine. Um, we'll get back to GIMP later. I'm going to keep trying to open up that one. Another nice one that I do like to use a lot is Blender. Blender is a 3D animation program, so clear like why, why did I bring this up at all? Well, Blender, as it turns out, um, has a video editing software that I've been hoping to use for some time. I haven't learned how to do it yet, but it does have that. Also, I seem to have some that opens, let's just drag a new tab. 
I was opening up the editor earlier today. <laughs> Can't tell. But yeah, so each of these programs I'm recommending for different reasons. So first of all, Fire Alpaca, you boot it up, it's easy. You just got to know three things to, you know, 35 things to, you know, make a good animation for Fire Alpaca. And right out the door, bam, you can animate. Nice and simple. Game Maker, on the other hand, is, you know, meant to make games, but it was initially created as a GIF creator and editor. So for someone like me who knew absolutely nothing about drawing back in the day, Game Maker was my introduction to animated images. It was my introduction to creating GIFs and creating sprites and such. And I didn't have a tablet those days either, so... Um, sprites are really helpful for art, I'll mention that later, but... Um, okay, Game Maker. So I mentioned Game Maker. Um, don't know why I opened up Discord. Man, so many windows. Which one do I choose next? Okay. Text. So the game's a little bit more advanced, it's kind of like Photoshop. I went to school and learned Photoshop, and learned the rest of the Adobe Suite, but... Um... You know, GIMP is like one of those. Also, this is Blender. So using GIMP, allow you to do the exact same things you want with Photoshop, but it also seems like you need some extra downloading privileges, which I'll get into later. Just to, you know, mention things, be on the safe side, of course. Um... As you can see... Blender is a, you know, 3D modeling program, but it also comes with a video sequence editor. So you, I'm not sure exactly how to make this. Um, go back to 3D view. See if I can change this one to video sequence editor. I sure can. And don't know how to make any of these taller. There we go. But yeah. So there's a way you can import and export videos. I don't know how to do that yet. But I'm sure it's really useful. Especially since I can't think of any other free, you know, powerful video compiling programs off the top of my head. I mentioned it's advanced because just like GIMP, you have to spend a lot of time digging through tutorials. And I took Maya in college, so I was ready, innately understanding of what a 3D engine was. And Pixlr is a web application. So if I show you it right here, um, the reason I mentioned that it's advanced is because, no, I don't think it's actually a, uh, does it even have a pen tool? Uh, syrup paint, bucket, clone, stamp, gradient, color, sharpen, blur, smudge, smile, dodge, red eye, spot heel, pinch, spot heel? Oh, well, it's got a wet brush there, buddy. Um. I don't know, but that's magical. Um, I don't seem to see a pen tool, so... This seems a bit limited in its... But it's also, I'm pretty sure, not an animation editor, so... You'd have to file and save manually. And if you can't really download anything else, this could be an option, but... I don't know how it works. So... You know, those are at least five... I don't... I'm sorry. The first two give the Blender are, you know, advanced programs that would take you time to learn. But Pixlr, I know it exists, you can use it, and it's browser-based, but uh, at the same time, if you can get a better animation program that's free, that's not an animation program. So there's that. Okay. What's next on the list, now that I've discussed at length? Um, oh, whoa! Uh, <laughs> it's program free. All the programs I did show are free. Okay. That <laughs> was the Photoshop, yeah. I wish I did have money for that, but for now, I'm going to try and start using OpenWare software so I can use it again. So, first things first, we need to talk about downloading. So, step one, you still need to download the program in order to use it. So, actually, I shouldn't mention this for later, but okay. So, the first thing's first, you should probably ask permission now. I know a lot of my fan base is still young. I just want to mention that, make sure that since these are usually computers owned by your parents and your family, to be able to ask permission before downloading something in case it is, you know, get them to check it over in case it's dangerous, in case it's, you know, they might know better than you. I don't know. 
but more importantly, since this is an animation program, it shouldn't be too hard to ask, but, you know, better to be on the safe side than sorry. And if you need to ask yourself permission, well, just make sure to listen to yourself. Now it's a little edgy there, I'm being all, but if you're, if you listen to yourself here, and then you're all like, man, I really don't like this. You should not be animating right now, then probably listen to yourself and wait to a different time. But, semantics aside, let's step on to the next one. Make sure you have enough hard drive space. As a matter of fact, be sure to check what the specs are of the program you're using. But let's 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 do an example. Um, Fire Alpaca specs. And also GIMP specs. Um, huh. I didn't even know there was a way to buy Fire Alpaca on Steam. Um, system requirements. Oh, I want to mash. Um, uh, system, uh, yeah, okay, that's requirements. So they're usually called system requirements. I forgot a bunch about that. I was attempting to highlight it, and, okay, so, for instance, for Fire of Packet, it says Windows 7 or later, so, um, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 100 megabytes of space. Actually, that's a really small amount of program, but anywho, um, Let's see, requirements... Where's, where's requirements? Main requirements. C compiler. Um, 200 megs for this one. Uh, without debugging, it turns off. Compiled to 20, 30 megabytes of space. Um, 64 megabytes! Oh boy. Um, looks like that is a little bit on the uh, simple side, ain't it? Um, yeah, so, always make sure to check the specs of what you're downloading before downloading it and make sure your computer is compatible enough. Sometimes you'll need to clear up space. Usually I just smash the Windows Explorer, smash computer, and go, oh, I have 134 gigabytes left. I'm not a very complicated person. Last thing, debugging. This will be on a per pace basis thing. Because who knows what happens when things blow up. They just go, kind of like that, me drawing it. And then it'll trail off for some unknown reason. Usually I'd say, if you are having trouble, just boot up your neighborhood friendly Google. Say Google box, what shall I do? Or more importantly, put in the correct team term, put in the correct t keywords. Sorry, I don't know why keywords became the hardest word for me to say. In order to figure it out. So for instance, I'm saying fire alpaca crash error. Let's say a display comes up or it says, won't install might be one or another one say crashes mid install or crashes while transferring data the more um, specific your keywords the better the more you search the better if you don't find an answer that's at least the basics I can say about debugging just it's a per basis thing you don't know what'll go wrong until it goes wrong programming it's life um, for at least for digital artists Gotta understand that. Things, if things can break, they probably will. Isn't that Murphy's Law or something? Anywho, so, on to the next part. Boy, are we speeding fast. Does this say, okay. Actually doing the animation. Now, there's a lot of different ways to animate. Also, by the way, if you're making an animation, don't slowly make your characters larger That's or smaller. Like, you know, there's certain things. But we're not going to delve deep into all the nitty-gritty of things. We're going to delve into... How to make frames. That's super important. So as you see here on the right, um, sorry, so, let's see, how, how was I framing this? Um, okay, so what do you use to draw, first of all? This is a computer. This isn't like pen and paper. This isn't like sculpting with clay. What do you use to draw? So, normally, people use, I can't, I don't have a camera up right now, so I can't exactly show you. But this is the thing I'm using. This is the thing I'm cheating with right now. It is it is a tablet, and it does pressure sensitivity. And I think even the more fancier and expensive ones have, like, tilt sensitivity. And even the even more expensive ones allow you to just draw on the screen. That's magical. But I know some people don't have one of these. And they have this. Clearly, I always advise, do a tablet. But if you don't have a tablet, if yours exploded or tore apart the cable like mine slowly happening, 
You need some options, don't you? You don't want to be left behind from anime, so what options do we have? Well, at least I have two. There's, I think I thought up of a third one too, and I forgot it already, but... First things first. Pen tool. Pen tool allows you to create fancy curves. You know, without even trying, so... Then I have pressure sensitivity lined up. Yeah, look at that. I did a thing. So, curve tools are usually important, especially in programs like GIMP and Photoshop. They'll allow you to create more or less vectors. And even though that, that pen tool wasn't exactly the... It's useful enough to create curves without having it. Tablet. Although, as I mentioned, there's pressure sensitivity. So, what you'll want to do is paint certain parts. Okay, let's just say I have a line here. And you'll erase parts of it. Boom. The eraser tool. Boom. Done. Now it looks like a slightly better curve than before. That's at least how I do when I don't have options. Okay, let's script that all out there. Okay, so... 15 again. The other is pixel art, which is how I grew up doing it. It's very easy when you're working with tiny modular pieces. Modular being, you know, fancy art term that means like Legos, it's building blocks. So when you have modular pieces and you don't have to work with a lot of them, whereas this is like, look at all that rasterization happening. Whereas this thing right here, it's just straight. So many pixels. You can do a lot. Like for instance, if I wanted to have her do like a um, idle animation, they always do. I go like that, and then drag the character down like that. Is it Control Y? Yeah, Control Y Z Y Z. And I do one of those animation things. It's a lot easier to change one pixel than it is to change a hundred. And it's a lot easier to fool people when you change one pixel in hundred. So you know when starting out, it's fine. The illusion of motion, as they say. Um, but, continuing on... Actually, I'll leave that up there. What's next on our list? Ah, uh, layers. Now that we know how to draw, or at least have some semblance that we could take a tablet or a mouse, and then squiggle something onto a screen, more or less. Just, just anything. Seriously, I'll go make a frame right now. There. That is a frame of animation. As long as you make it so. Alright. Now we have that explained. What's important is layering. You'll need to create several different layers in order to create an animation. Animations are multiple images in a row. There are multiple images played back at a certain speed in order to fool the eye. That's how videos work, is that it just takes camera shots non-stop. You know, in order to show a moving picture. Anyway, I'm not, I don't know the exact science, but more importantly... ...is that when you create multiple frames very close together... ...creates illusion of, you know, movement as such. And usually programs might come with an... Whoa there, Nelly. Uh, it looks like it doesn't like me, so let's drag that up there. So, okay. So you can see... Um, this fire alpaca has an onion layering mode that allows me to go between each of the frames. And you can see like a little green here. This little green thing, this little orange thing. That tells you uh, which frame is coming after and which frame is coming before. So those little dash lines allow you to think, where am I supposed to draw next? But, you know, it takes practice to know exactly where. At least you can see there's like little guidelines. So now that we know that, how else, let's say, let's say we don't have a program that has onion layering skin mode. Uh, I thought I turned that off. Okay. So how are we supposed to make it? I'm gonna move those back in there. Make it seem like it, even though we don't have that ability. Opacity! Usually frames come with opacity. So you can turn off frames, and then you can draw right on over them when they're low opacity. And then you can set a second frame, so you can look between the two frames. Usually I try and make one a different opacity than the other, so I see 116. What's 25? Um, actually, I usually like to do... 40, 20. 
So you can tell which one's heavier. You can tell this one. Um, so 20 is before. So this one's before. That one's after. If I wanted to make some sort of in-between that was weighted in a certain direction, whatever those words means, I could. So opacity, if you don't have that, or if you do have an onion laying thing, use it. It'll help you out in the long run. Okay. But more importantly is to have three different layers, which I do at the moment, if I wanted to make this into an animation, which I might at some point. I may very well do so. I may do so. Yeah, so... we do that after the stream's ended, just to give you an example. But yeah, so you need to create multiple images in order to have an animation to render. It can be two pictures of a video game copy and pasted onto a canvas in order to render out. You can do screenshots. You can do whatever you like, as long as there is an image and a second image. It could be absolutely nothing and could be the worst, like, nausea-inducing animation ever, but it would still be an animation. That's the point. Okay. Now we've gotten past all that stuff. Now we need to talk about exporting. Okay, so... Exporting is the way of taking these random drawings inside the program and throwing them out and creating an animation with them. But there's a little few hiccups you might need to know about so that you can understand how each program creates its own animation and what work it does. So, to begin, let's talk about how they export, and it's usually done in a matter of two ways. Either indirectly, where it'll shoot out every single frame as if you had just saved it, which is why I mentioned Pixlr earlier, because that's just doing the same function. Or, it'll export the GIF directly. Photoshop has an option for that. You just do a save as web. Um, GIMP also does. I'll be showing that in a bit. But, so for instance, if you want a high quality animation, you probably want to have it frames, and then go to something like Blender, or After Effects, or Premiere, and then compile all the frames together, they usually have a very quick way of going, it's an image sequence, now you can export it. Very easy way of doing that. So, usually if you want high quality, so let me just put high quality, so I'm actually the right wrong thing. That's that. You get each of the frames out, you'll be able to export in whatever video editing software you have available. I think Macs actually come with video editing software, so if you're on a Mac, that's a good idea. Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to keep those on there. But okay, so this will be lower quality, more or less. You have to compress. Actually, I'm not even going to call it lower quality. I'm going to call it compression. It means the same thing, but instead of telling you that it's one's good and one's bad, one shows that, you know, you have to drop colors when it comes to using a GIF. I think GIFs can only use 255 colors when animating them, or when exporting them. So if you're doing a pixel art animation with a low palette, you should be okay. But if you're doing like a drawing with all this anti-aliasing, and you add a bunch of colors in there, and it's just all over the place, uh, there's going to be like all these in-between colors and you drop opacity for so for some reason you're coloring over everything that is going to c be compressed in a GIF I think there are other codecs that have a high enough bit rate but more or less programs will come with one or the other and it's important to understand how to do both conveniently Fire Alpaca just happens to be one program that does both now if I hit the export button, right now, um, uh, let's, uh, let me give you an example of both happening. So, I'm gonna select all that aren't that, I'm gonna have the delete, not delete button. Uh, just gonna nuke it from orbit, it's the only way to be sure. So if I hit tool, um, no, I, I need to, I need to drag those outside. Okay. So now we've got these three frames of layering that I showed earlier. Um, we're going to show exactly how to export in Fire Alpaca. 
other ways to do it in other programs, but I think I just have enough time to do it that. So first of all, export layers, bring up a thing. And I'm just going to toss it on the desktop. I'm going to give it, yeah, I'm just going to say select folder. Uh, do I want to make background transparent? Let's say no. But as you see, right after I tell it to, you know, render it, it'll say open Alpacaduga. It's animated GIF convert service. So it has its own created GIF software, which looks a lot like this. And so you can even set frame rate, and loop replay. Uh, but more importantly, I need to pick up the frames for the animation. So I don't know why I need to so open. I'm sure it has its own. They all have their own. I'm sure if you want me to work with one another day, I sure will. But for now, I'm just going to show you how Alpacaduga works, and then I'll be open for questions. So, going to wait for Alpacaduga to open up this animation. It's kind of big. I think it's 720 by 480. Actually, now I think on it. I can get all those back. Actually, I'm going to get Y a bunch. It's like that. Save it out. One, two, three, and now you can count two, three. And now there's a little animation happening here. You can slow down the frame rate. I, I can't handle anything lower. A second's pretty hard. Ooh, that one kind of looks nice. Let's, let's double the frame rate. Actually, let's go crazy. 30 frames per second. No one can even watch that. 12 frames per second. A little closer. I think it has a default of 8 frames per second. But it'll make every single frame it's on speed. We're going to have loop replay on here. I'm not going to insert the logo, just in case you, you know, wanted to look the exact same as the way you asked for it to come out. And hit download now. I'm just going to open this. Um, so let's see. Click here to download. Okay. One, two, three. Boom. Say... Layer anim GIF. And now I have it on my desktop because I seem to just be dumping everything to my desktop. And there it is. There's the animation using the three principles that I had talked about today having a program, downloading said program, I'm sorry, having a program, down, I'm oh, sorry, making frames. Which I didn't exactly show how, but you know, enough. There's a little new frame button here. Let's see, put it down there. I should zoom in. I think there's like a zoom in function somewhere. But yeah, and then exporting it out. I uh, both have frames. I could also do something fancy with frames in a video editing software, like translate them. But yeah. Go, alright, take care, Chase. And yeah, so that's basically the most basic tutorial I could come up with. For creating an animation. Um, also, I kind of want to. Okay, so if anyone has, life gives you lemons. You make them exploding lemons and throw them back at life. Burn life's house down. How dare they? But yes. So, whoops. Okay. Oh, okay. Like simple shake my head. Yeah, okay, so... Okay, good idea. I should probably make it the first 30 minutes. It's, you know, a little disjointed, but at the end of the day... I just wanted to have a very quick 30 minute... Um... Like, idea... Of how to, sh like, show... How to animate. Just, just the idea of what animation itself is and how to create one. Rather than... You know... Explaining how to animate without anyone knowing how to animate to begin or how to even begin So for instance, I wanted to show GIMP for a bit because people have been you know studying GIMP and it's one that I worked with a while One of the things I note over here is that oh look it's background frame 2 and frame 3 Each right next to it is a millisecond counter If I change the milliseconds it will change the f rate the animation plays back at so I'm going to have two frames be doubled, 
and one frame be like cut in third, two thirds. Go to animation here and we hit playback. And I'll play back the three frames. Wait, did I? Yeah, okay, so they're playing back that two frames are longer, one frame is shorter. Oh, no worries, don't worry, I'm sure in the other tutorials, um, we will, you know, when I start doing animations that people can try and walk through with me, um, that will be a good idea to, you know, sit down and discuss with me if anything goes wrong. Like I said, debugging, it's important to, you know, stop by and say, hey, what's going on? You need any help? <laughs> Make lemon pie. Ooh, lemon pie does sound nice. But anywho, so I'm gonna create a new game. Oh, yeah, sounds just fine. I'll close that one without saving. I'll just be doing an animation in the same sort of vein that um mentioned earlier. Uh. A great question. Sorry, I'm trying to think of how to do this in a simple way without. No, I'm just. Actually, this does have a pen tool. All oh, it has a pen tool. Okay. Oh, but it's a select tool. Yeah, create and edit paths. Stroke path! Stroke! Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to... Oh. Well, it's troubling. If you try and make a selection, or a path, and stroke path, let's make it eight. Um, stroke. Okay, so... Oh, no worries. Um... I'm just gonna... Yeah, there isn't much to do, talk about right now, so... Oh, this one allows you to even edit paths after you create them. There's like a path? Oh, there is a path! I'm gonna delete that one. It's nice that creating a new path doesn't overwrite the old one. Photoshop CS5 has trouble with that. But, you know what I can do? I can... Uh... Why won't you stroke the path? Oh, do I not have a path? I don't have a path selected. Well, yeah, uh, locks? I want to stroke the pass. I'm so confused what's going on right now. Um... Because I should be able to do something with the path, right? Edit. Oh, there we go. Okay, you have to click it so that appears again. Um. Uh, okay, you need to, um, when you say animate two objects physically touching each other, I'm going to stroke this path again. Um. Do you mean, um, there's a lot. There's a lot you gotta go. And uh, I'm going to create a new layer. Um, see if I can deselect the path. And just, uh, uh, what is the brush tool shortcut? P, okay. I'm going to need to discuss three things. Um, oh, I see. Also hitting Control D does not um, deselect. There's a deselect shortcut. Shift Control A. Okay, so there's several things you need to know about when you're talking about objects and having them touch because it just seems like you're asking for a collision animation, and that gets into physics. So the first thing is, what material are they made with? Two. Um. Uh, wait. That makes it two. I'm gonna say. Forces. I'm just gonna call it forces. 
not a bad idea to get an animation, but always make sure to, you know, have your focus in life, too. It just seems like I couldn't escape animation. I never wanted to be an animator, either, but... End of the day, here I am, digital artist. Who would have thought? Um, just wanted to make cute comics, to be fair. Um, so... If, okay, so I have two... Let's call them spheres, and they're moving at each other. Um... The animation I've taught you so far literally just has two frames, or more or less. Where there's two of them apart, and there's two of them together. Also, like to start coloring them as cubes so I don't offend anyone. So, let's actually just do that again. And just be like, whoa, they just like smack together. Um, as just, I'm sorry. My mind does not like going place. But anywho, so, you know the forces. So there's like friction. Friction of the floor that the two things are colliding at, unless it's air friction. So there's like air, um, and you know, velocity. How fast are they going towards each other? Actually, what if one's going fast this way and one's going slow that way? What, what happens to the forces then? Yeah, it's it's basic physics, but then again, I just remembered basic physics in the last few seconds, so it might be difficult. Um, but yeah. And also, probably the third one? I just remembered this one. Style. So let me give you another frame, by frame analysis, of what would happen. So let's say they're just physical cubes. This one's going like this. This one's going like this. And the next frame... They just collide. There's probably a very slight swish. Actually, let's drop the opacity a bit. Let's make sure that there's a... Uh, opacity, go down. Um, okay, so there's a floor there. Let's just pretend the floor is straight. The floor is lava. Okay. So the next frame, I want them to be collided try and not cause them to shrink it's like the one tip I actually gave so then they collide and then the forces react to each other let's say that they're equal forces let's say they equal um I messed that up they probably also squished a bit just a teeny bit on the impact that could either be shown by it being vertically taller or maybe the two kind of overlapping with each other Depends on what you're trying to do, how much realism you're putting into it. And then... Frame 3... Is gonna be similar, but they're just gonna like... Kinda be sitting. They're like perfectly equal, which they usually never are, and usually friction causes everything to roll around anyway. I just say that for all intents and purposes, now force equals zero for each of them because I'm a math nerd. And yeah, there's on a plane. Uh. Uh, why are you. Why are you draw. Trying to. Oh, this is so weird. Control Z does not work the way you think it would. Um. Ah! That's a good point. This goes back into what I was talking about um, when it comes to material. Since I didn't talk about their materials at all, I assumed, I assumed they had the same material and they had the same velocity. So they just collide both in the same rotation, let's say, as well. They collide, nothing happens. Little squish. If you Also, I should mention right before I leave that one, a, behind, let's say we want cartoony. Why? Uh, why would I create something and then change its transparency and then try and create a line besides, okay. Let's say you want it to be cartoony. Let's say you want them to actually deform when they collide. That doesn't make sense. Usually, usually you do like a circular, but think about that, think about it like a liquid. You want them to conform to the space that they're colliding into. Way that makes sense to the viewer. So, if they're still equal forces, 
it'd look a little bit more like this. Because they're trying to conform to a similar space, this will be like one frame, so it'll be gone pretty quickly. But it'll look like that. This is when they're colliding with equal forces. They're both like shoved together, and then they retract, which might cause some opposite movement if you want to do that too. Um, just because of the compression. But okay. Back to your next question. You asked, um, what happens... Like I said, I'm just doing a bunch of math right now. It's, it's nothing... nothing special. Um, but you're saying if there's a big object and a little object. And here's the thing. Uh, how does that work? I, I'm so confused. What? 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 Oh boy. Uh, I'm so confused. Um, I'll get I'll get to your question. Aka <laughs> logic, yeah. Um. Confused at what's going on with my program. My apologies. It'd be easier if I showed you this in alpaca. I think I might do that. Um, just close that. I probably should have saved that. Let's just create a new one. 72480, got it. So let's minimize it a bit so that we got some space for y'all. And it's gonna do that, isn't it? Okay. So let's zoom out. So we have our two, two spheres being all spherical, but one of them is bigger, one of them is smaller, and they're both, let's say, the equation changes because again, you know, it's physics. I, I know I keep saying basics. So, force equals mass acceleration. That is, that is basics physics equation. So the force, the driving force, is dependent on the mass of this, and how fast it's accelerating. Mass, acceleration, which to be fair, if these are going at a constant speed with no friction on the ground or equal friction, having a force, which is really just a, friction is like, it's weighed down by gravity, force of gravity, and then pushing back up against it and back in the direction of its rotation is the force of friction. You know, yada yada, it's, it's stuff you learn in school. I can't, I can't remember that well. But okay, so... Oh my gosh. I just realize that the reason that acceleration is probably used because these both come to a collision and their accelerations change, I guess. Um... Which means that they're just rolling along at a constant speed. No force is actually being applied to them? No work is being applied. Is this work actually is equal to mass times acceleration? Uh, I don't remember. There's, there's a bunch of formulas back in the day. But the point, point of the matter is, the important thing is that when you have a bigger object and a smaller object, the forces of the two get more, like, the mass becomes important. So, for instance, uh, let's give two examples. The first one is the one you're probably thinking of. Two balls rolling set at equal speeds, but kinda, kinda, yeah. You probably don't need to care half the time because you're just drawing pretty pictures anyway and at the end of the day, just making cool things happen on TV. That's, that's what I think. But usually I put a lot of... I'm a very math-oriented person. So let's say these two things... Let's go to tool. Um, these things collide. The bigger mass... You don't have to know exactly how much. Let's say the bigger mass... The, the accelerations are equal to each other. One, two. Um, the bigger mass is going to override the smaller mass. So, let's just say this mass wins, because I am very untechnical. Mass wins. Um, 
what'll probably happen in the next frame is that this mass that look like as if nothing happened. Let's say let's call it a squish frame. Let's say they squish. So this one's lost its acceleration this direction. This one's a is equal to zero. Let's just say but this one's acceleration still has a bit of drive. Let's say greater than zero. So because of its mass being greater than the other, tiny m. So it's gonna want these things to roll in this direction. It's gonna want to continue moving. Inertia. It's a physics thing again. So, and what is animation but trying to emulate reality? That's what all good art is. Attempt to emulate reality in some way, and people are like, oh! So the next frame probably goes like this. Where this one's being pushed along forward, this one is carrying what this one is pushing along. So it's kind of like this. So you have force here. Force wants to keep going. This one's in the way, this one gets a force applied to it, so that, that one can keep going. I think... According to inertia? Or is it according to... Because sometimes... Okay, because sometimes you have... Like in billiards, where you have two balls, and one just goes boop. And then in the next frame... You have that ball just stand still, and this one's going forward. Depends on how believable you want it to be. At the end of the day, style is just as important. Because materials can also be effective by their style. So for instance, if I had something be cartoony, let's say, um, and it's a big mass, and it's a little mass, it goes this way, this way, let's say plasticity is an effect here. More importantly is the word is it's plastic. And what happens when you bend plastic? It breaks. So, in a cartoon, or the next thing that would happen, this would roll along, rise it at contact, this will get crushed, little m, and then this just continues going forward. Also, it seems like I've got a slide. And this thing's just smushed on the ground. It is, it doesn't have any acceleration anymore. It just it's <laughs> just a flat nothing. This one keeps going. So as you can see, those are the two things that can happen when something big hits something little. If it doesn't crush it, both of them will just continue to be knocked along at a slower speed. You know, some stuff canceling out, but not everything. It does crush it, well... Soaps are crushed, and there's nothing you can do. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, so more or less that's basic physics. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up uh I'm gonna look up um principles of animation. Because when it comes to knowing what to do next, who better to check than Disney? The creators of modernish animation. Honestly, what are you doing other than trying to emulate life? So... Probably check to see if anyone else is on the stream. Wouldn't be important to know. I see, they've been gone during the half of it. That's fine. But okay, so we have squash and stretch, which I've been mentioning a few times. It's the idea that things that are flexible tend to squash on impact. And the more cartoony, the more you want them to sort of... It's also kind of a motion blur effect, but... It looks better when you don't blur it. Ah. Condention. Also sort of like muscles expanding and contracting like that horse there. Anticipation is more of a video technique. It's like lining up a punch. If somebody just does a quick jab, no matter how much the other the other person is hit by it they could be flown off into a mountainside and explode but you'll feel as if they didn't put all their power into that jab whereas if you pull back your arm okay let's actually just visualize this so okay we got stick fighter here he's look he's looking Put him in a nice 
put him in a nice force stance. And then we got Stick Fighter B here. He's kind of just like, oh dear, I'm going to get punched soon. What do I do? Uh, maybe their wigs are wobbling too. Wobble, 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 wobble. Um, so if I have no anticipation there, I just have this left hand just go straight forward. Oh no. Acting. Punch, even though it didn't connect. They could fly off into a cliff and lay like, oh. Did I punch you? Did I punch you and they'll be like, in a cliff somewhere. Good old Dragon Ball Z and they'll just be like, bunch of smoke leading up to them. You know, and they'll just be like, we like these explosion lines. Dashes in the center for some reason. Even further dashes, because man, the breeze blowing everywhere. But because these two frames happened, you don't feel like that was a hard punch. We had a frame in here of where he pulls back his hand, like. Maybe, like, has that hand, like, aiming out. Like, oh man, I am totes gonna, like. I can day and that person's like, Oh dear, I'm still scared for some unexplicable reason. I don't know why I'm doing it like this. They're still just like that. It gives you the feeling that between this frame and this frame, that there's extra power behind it. It might make this part more believable. Oh, I can't do camera pants or attack. So, now uh, displaying that one, we have staging um, and theater. Direct the audience's attention. Um, the presentation of any idea that is completely and unmistakably clear. So, silhouettes! That's what we call it in drawing, at least. Um, or also, videography. Rule of thirds and such. Straight ahead, action, and pose to pose. Which, I've been doing pose to pose. So, for instance, when I was animating this, I went straight ahead. I just did things as they came. But pose, I'm sorry, these are pose to pose. But straight ahead, I'm like drawing each frame, going a little like that. And then, just slowly, surely wake, walking, oh, wait a second, uh, gotta remember to actually put some, um, extra stuff in there. I say as it slowly becomes condensed and crushed. Um, just like that. So now there's this little fluid animation here going, then pulling back forward, but there's not a lot of, sorry, so there is that, but I didn't put any weight to any of the actions there, so it's still bad. But, I mean, that's the idea of straight ahead. So you make poses, and then you in between them. So maybe... Oh, wait, what does this say? It says, pose to pose is better for dramatic. Emotional. Yeah, so normally when you're doing 3D animation, there are arcs to your curves and such. But you still want to put out poses so you can frame this and stage the scene. And so we have follow through and overlapping. So you follow through and overlapping. So yeah, let's say, let's say this guy has a ponytail for no apparent reason. He's just gonna be like, oh, bo, bo. It's got, they have a ponytail. So this frame over here, you expect it if you're just keying it, their ponytail is gonna be the same. And this frame here, their ponytail is going to be the same. For some inexplicable reason, it probably shouldn't be. It should be billowing in the wind. That's the point. That's follow through. Follow through is saying that if this character leans forward, the hair should flow back. And then in this frame, probably not because of that, but like, 
let's say I make another frame here. This character's slowly like going this and so the hair wants to flow back, so you create follow through. So that um give a little time for Wait, is that Where are the Oh I see. That just goes down a little more. So that you feel that there's weight to the object that you're creating. Not, I'm sorry, not just weight as in the movement, but the weight as in... It's like rope. It wants to dangle back and forth. Okay. And then we have... Ease and ease out. Easiest way as I can show that is by creating... Let's say a car. And we want this car to come to a stop, but also animate it poorly. So... Let's say, there it is, here's the stop sign. It's off screen because for some reason I don't want to pan the camera. So easy, so frame one, it's gonna have that car, probably not there, but let's just say it's there. And if I duplicate that layer, there's also a duplicate layer function by the way, and it should stop at the stop sign. Frame one, frame two, also translation. I forgot to say translation, rotation, are also very important useful tools if you aren't very good at drawing, so... You can just drag stuff, create one frame, and then turn it into ten. <laughs> now you're thinking with portals. Now ease out, because we want it to screech to a salt, to show how much speed is coming in it. We'll have like an in-between frame here. But what I'm going to do is duplicate this frame next, and then make this one go like this in between there. And then duplicate that one. And then go like this. Boom. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. And then we slowly but surely create cars that get closer and closer to their destination. Never quite reach it. It's kind of like that math problem I was telling you. Oh, if you get closer and closer to the destination and never reach it. Are you really doing anything? Can you ever really reach the end? Well, of course they said, yeah, of course you can. Oops, uh, duplicate that one, toss it there. And then, that's also why that onion layering is so useful. So yeah, so, let's see if I can, can I page up and down? Okay, so, you got the car, I'm gonna hit view, um, onion skin on, oh boy. I'm gonna turn onion skin back on. Okay, onion skin, and the car slowly pulls up. It almost seems like, you know, you weren't just, uh, also, by the way, good tip. When you're translating, it's a good idea to hold the shift key so you don't accidentally, you know, wobble back up and down. Just realize that. Uh, da, 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 da. So, you see it's screeching to a halt and it slows down and stops. And it gives it that extra sense of reliability and readability. You might also, like, change a few of these frames to have it sort of, like, fall in on itself. Before it hits the end. Who knows? Cartoons, you know? And then... We have arc. Most natural action tends to follow an arc trajectory. So yeah, ease ends are kind of like that, so let's get an example by drawing another frame. Let's say... Stick guy's like, oh, I threw it. Oh, I threw the ball. And this guy's like, Oh, I'm going to catch it. I'm totally going to catch this ball because apparently this is the pose you do for catching and not for messing up completely and utterly. So, you'd expect, yeah, parabola through the air. You'd expect it to be like that and then slowly grow bigger over time till it's apparently a bowling ball and the sky falls to the ground because you didn't see it coming because it's so far in the distance. Anywho, so... Most anything is like that. You have a guy's ponytail. Let's go with that one, or girls. Their ponytail. Um, you'll notice that at any point in time that I'm going to swing his, her, their ponytail. Um, for mods or for 
the one I have on YouTube. So let's assume that there's two frames here. And there'll be an arc where this goes. You don't want it just to just linearly go between these two points. You want it to feel as if it's swooping down and then slowing to a stop here. Maybe we'll even curve up a bit. Show that the weight's starting to come to a stop. Like, for pendulum. A pendulum, straight down, and then you have a left pendulum and a right pendulum. You know, they swing from side to side. But if you had somebody who had these two here, and said in between this pendulum from this point to this point, and they show this, they're not thinking in arts. That didn't, that didn't, that didn't happen. So, you know. I don't know, that's critiques. Art's all about critiques, right? Oh. Maybe the hair was secondary action. And maybe the, uh... Follow-through and overlapping action is like if somebody were to punch and their head follows through? Or maybe, like... Or maybe, maybe it's more if we have the person who's like pull them back. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna punch. They're gonna like punch, and then they punch, switching around. They kind of stagger forward a bit from the inertia and trying to stop themselves before writing to that position. So this, this is one, three, two. So. That frame goes very shortly before hopping back to this one, which is the key frame. Because they stagger a bit before getting straight, because they're fallible. Uh... Sure? Um... Oh, just a minute, uh... Can I look at my server settings? See invites. I don't know who that is. Maybe someone changed their name recently. Um. Hmm. Anywho, uh. Actually, I think what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to go here at like instant invite. And then you want me to paste it like here, yeah? Something happened? Um. What happened? Oh, computer works, awesome. Uh. You have to double check that thing, too. Oh, Death Spy! I remember that guy. Yeah, I can join. Okay, so let's finish up animation ease and ease out, arc, secondary action, timing. Okay, so um, let me open up a new one. It's going to be easier to show you this with um, uh, you know, okay, so let's say we're doing a run cycle and I don't care about it. I'm just going to have it be super cartoony and it view onion layer and then like this I guess uh, this I guess okay not even arms so we just have two things so if I hit view autoplay that's what it looks like at 12 FPS let's add some in-betweens to that though some basic rudimentary in-betweens and sometimes I drag the first frame up to the top so I can see what a loop will look like between the two so this isn't gonna look good at all let's just say that but now if I've hit view autoplay it's a little slower. Let's make it even slower. Let's add another frame in between there. 
add another frame in between here. So this one be like a snap frame. And then add another frame in here. Okay. Do a little circly thing here. And then add another frame. If I go up here. I need to update GIMP probably. That's probably what I need to do. See debugging. So now I've added a few more frames. Now that the walk cycle slows down and looks really jank. <laughs> Now, if I, but that's the point of the argument, is that if I keep drawing more frames, the animation slows down, and what does it happen? It exaggerates the action that's happening. So... You know, slowly but surely... Um... Slowly and charity. Um, also, I need to make sure. Things together. Clearly, you would want to use more actual techniques like inertia, slow down, speed up, that sort of stuff. But I'm right now just trying very clearly to give a quick idea of what a two frame can look really fast. And like, you really want the action to happen very quickly. Whereas, slowing it down to about 16 frames... ...will cause it to look a lot slower and floatier, and if I had actually added any in-betweens... I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that, actually. I'm gonna actually shove this one so close. And then hit view autoplay. Now it's this really over exaggerated walk cycle. Which is bad. But the idea is it's over exaggerated, and unlike a two one, which is gonna look really, really fast. Which let me just. Let me just take layer 1 and layer 5 and just go like that and hit view. I think I need to go like this. Figure out where I put layer 2 at. Delete that. Hit view. Autoplay. That's what it's going to look like if you don't have it exaggerated. Whereas if you do have it exaggerated, look like that. It'll change the mood. Or less. So in dramatic scenes, I can understand them having exaggerated scenes. Because you want a lot of time to just, like, see the emotion happen on the face of the character, you know? Kind of like that. Maybe in, like, a fight scene. Not like Naruto or something. Solid drawing. Is it taking them in three-dimensional space or giving them weight? Okay, I, so the things of the two balls hitting each other, that's volume and weight. That's solid drawing, I guess. Physics. Characters left and right sides mirror each other and look lifeless. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm having weight to things, so this is just weight and appeal. Okay, so I've been drawing a lot of stick figures, but the one that they always show for appeal is, like, someone's about to wind up. So if you think of somebody winding up, um... Uh, let's see, so you have, like, it's hard to think of what it is. Um, uh, feels the character is real and interesting. Charisma. Captivation. This might actually have to do with, uh, silhouette and staging, so for instance, Let's say we have someone angrily walking. So you could have someone just being like, herp, herp, derp, dirt, and maybe hunched over. 
they're like they're just like so like one hand swinging forward while that leg goes back okay so normal cartoon would you think this is an angry I didn't add angry eyes think this is an angry walk cycle not really no because there's nothing here telling me that this is angry now if I like curve the character have them like do this like spread arms pose and have them take really big let's see um well they still gotta lean into it that's Say they're taking huge steps like that. The character actually looks a little terrifying, but point being that making a character look more appealing in how they're posed ten that's also a little bit of extra exaggeration. Okay, let's actually I can think of Uh, let me duplicate that. Because this character looks a little bit more sad. But we can do better. We can always do better. So... There's... Let me try to think of a few ways. There's one way I could. I could have them... Hunched over even more. Hands covering faces. Like... Let's say... Maybe even have their legs wobbling a bit, like... They're ready to give out at any moment. I can also have them... Um... Uh... Wanna... Let's see... I don't know if that well, does it? Sure, but yeah, you could have them, like... They're also crying for some reason. Because they're sad. So yeah. Adding a little extra... Motion to it. Because this kind of does look like a sad one. But that might give more of an exaggerated and understanding to the audience. Maybe it's also the design of the characters. I don't know. But anywho. I think that should wrap it up really all that well. Um... So, we'll be doing a different, hopefully next week, either I'll be working on my comic, or we'll be showing a different type of animation technique, and I'll just simply sit down, go through the ropes, and try and discuss what I'm doing, what you're, I'm sorry, we're going to create an animation on a theme, which will probably be one of the um, animation things, and we'll discuss or animation principles, and we'll discuss, you know, animations we create we can create together, or you can just watch and discuss what I'm doing while I'm doing it. And I'll try and give the best that I can while animating to describe to you what exactly I'm looking for in the animation and what I'll be doing, so or how it works. And actually, given Chase's uh, examples, I might do a ball bounce, do some physics, because that will be... He was talking a lot about solid drawing, although he was mentioning more about the idea of various different objects moving and or colliding within the same space. So I'll give it that some idea to it. All right. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you had a good time. Hope you were able to at least comprehend animating and how to start it at least. And if you don't, it would probably be, um, feel free to discuss that in the comments. Um, if you want to discuss more with me outside of the time of when I'm streaming, feel free to check my Discord. And there's hopefully a link on the um, on my YouTube in order to face go there face reveal. <laughs> my face, it looks like this. Up, 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 Is it like a rotate? Like, can I rotate canvas or something? Edit. Uh, is it like? Wall. Maybe it's that one. Uh, eh. 
I don't remember it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and I hope you all have a good night. Don't see you again. Hope you have a good life. Bye-bye.